Hello everybody, uh, myself Prasanth Mukhavadda, faculty member, Electrical Engineering Department, Geta Kolkata College of Engineering and Management. So in our uh, uh, Electric Machine 2 uh, class, uh, in the last class we have uh, discussed about uh, the two reaction th theory of uh, salient pole and synchronous machines and uh, the analysis of uh, the present diagram out of it. Uh, today, uh, we'll uh, start a new topic uh, that is the parallel operation of alternators and uh, synchronizations and load divisions. So, why uh, parallel operations and what does it mean by the parallel operations? So, after uh, so studying uh, this uh, topic, so you will be able to know that uh, what is the basic requirement uh, for the parallel operation and when the parallel operation is uh, required and uh, how uh, during parallel operations how uh, say alternators are synchronized uh, those who are taking part in the parallel operations and how uh, the loads are divided among uh, themselves so so that is uh, the basic uh, objectives of uh, this um, learning and uh, uh, say with this, uh, let us start with uh, what is uh, the parallel operations of alternator. So, when uh, the load on a uh, system exceeds uh, the amount of power uh, that a single or existing number of generators can deliver, an additional generator is connected to the system to deliver required power. And uh, this method of adding an alternator in the existing system is called parallel operations of alternators. So once again, I am repeating. Uh, when the load on a system exceeds the amount of power that a single or existing number of generators can deliver, an additional generator is connected to the system to deliver required power. And this method of adding an alternator in this existing system is called parallel operation of alternators. So, so it is essential. Uh, to know uh, that the incoming uh, alternator must be a parallel such that uh, each machine is supplying a proportionate amount of active and reactive power to the common load. And they are connected uh, parallel by means of transformer and transmission lines. And under uh, normal operating uh, conditions, all the, the generators and synchronous motors are in an interconnected system operating uh, synchronism with each other. And a machine has to be adjusted from optimum operating efficiency and greater reliability if the generators are connected in parallel. So as the load increases uh, beyond generated capacity uh, of the connected units, uh, additional generators are parallel uh, to carry the load. Similarly, if the load uh, demand uh, decreases, one or more machines are taken off uh, the line as per the requirement, and it uh, allows the uh, you need to operate at a higher efficiency. What is the reason of parallel operations? Uh, alternators are uh, operated in parallel for, the, uh, for these reasons uh, as stated here. So this is several alternators can supply a bigger load uh, than a single alternator. And one or uh, more uh, alternators may uh, shut down during the period of light loads and thus the remaining alternator operates at a near or a full load with a greater efficiency. And uh, when one machine is taken out of service for its scheduled maintenance and inspection, the remaining machines maintain the uh, continuity of the supply. And if there is a breakdown of the generator, there is uh, no interruption of the power supply. And a uh, number of machines uh, can be added without disturbing the initial installations according to the requirement to fulfill uh, the increasing uh, future demand of the load. And parallel operation the alternator uh, reduces the operating cost and the cost of energy generation. And also, it ensures uh, the great, greater security of supply and enables overall economic generation. So, these are the uh, reasons uh, behind it uh, for parallel operations. And the necessary conditions for parallel operations are such. So, it is never uh, recommended to connect an alternator to a standstill, that is, stationary alternator to the bus bar of a live system. An alternator at standstill generates no stator EMF, uh, which when connected in a rotating alternator, alternator uh, would act as a load instead and uh, cause internal circulating currents, which can lead to the major faults. So there are some uh, conditions to be uh, satisfied for parallel operations of uh, the alternator, and before entering into that, 
we should understand uh, some uh, terms which are the, as follows. The flashes of uh, connecting uh, two uh, alternators or an alternator and an infinite bus bar system in parallel is known as the synchronizing. And a running machine is the machine which carries uh, the load. And incoming machine is the alternator or machine which has to be connected in parallel with the system. So these are the basic uh, terms you must have to know of the parallel operation that is uh, synchronizing uh, running machines and incoming machines. And the conditions to be satisfied are uh, the phase sequence of the incoming machine uh, voltage and the bus bar voltage should be identical. And the RMS line voltage, that is terminal voltage of the bus bar or already running machines and the incoming machines should be the same. And the phase angle of the two systems should be equal. And the frequency of the two terminal voltages, say incoming machines and the bus bar, should be nearly the same. And last for transition tangents, uh, we lock up when frequencies are not equal, nearly equal. Okay, so these are the conditions so that is uh, phase sequence, uh, voltage or terminal voltage, uh, phase sequence should be identical, terminal voltage should be same, and the phase angle of the two systems should be equal. And the frequency of the two terminal voltages uh, should be uh, nearly the same. And if it is not a large tangent, we look at point uh, frequencies are not nearly equal. So, differences from the above uh, conditions will result in the formations of uh, power surges and current. And it is also results in unwanted electromechanical oscillations of the rotor, uh, which leads to the damage of the equipment. So, this is the phase sequence ABC, and this is ACB. So, or uh, incorrect basically if it is a A B A C so it, it also should be A B C not A C B. Okay. And the correct phase sequence uh, this is the correct phase sequence a, uh, this is uh, incorrect uh, phase sequence between the two. Okay. You can follow this. And phase shift uh, due to the different frequency say so this is actually a U1. And if a E2 is out of frequency of a E1, so there, there will be the phase shift. Okay. And as a result, this is the result of voltage. So the effect, this is due to the effect of division in speed. Okay. And uh, what happens when the parameters are not match? So alternative voltage, so the magnitude of the internal voltage uh, of both incoming and existing uh, alternative must be identical. Hence, the potential difference will be created because the separation of current uh, among the two alternatives, and this is undesirable. Okay, if uh, voltage phase phase shift is there, when the zero crossing of both the voltage waveforms are not the same, the phase shift of us are resulting in a voltage whose magnitude keeps on changing. And this can uh, be explained as a voltage uh, which, will, which, when given across a lamp, will make it illuminate with different intensities. And alternative speed, uh, suppose uh, the magnitude of the alternative voltage of both the existing unit and the incoming unit are the same. Uh, depending upon the field excitation and the in phase uh, to external uh, local circuit named E1 and E2 that is shown here. Okay. So E1 and E2 oh, that is uh, shown here in case uh, even though the voltages are same but if the speed of the terms are not equal that is uh, uh, ES1 is not equal to ES2. So in that case uh, the frequencies of both alternatives will not match the in a phase shift between the uh, two voltages and the dual form often as uh, shown uh, constantly uh, varying uh, result under. So this is the synchronous synchroscope variance. This is synchroscope. This is too slow. This is too fast. This is slow and this is fast. Okay. This is password and this is generator. Okay. Now uh, synchroscope connection diagram. This is the connection diagram of this is radio loop, and uh, this is synchroscope. This is relay contacts, and these are the auxiliary supply. And this is the current Okay, so this is the connection diagram. So incorrect phase that also we have uh, discussed. This will be uh, damaged. Uh, so bigger the phase difference, uh, the motor uh, more electromechanical phases between the out of phase alternator. And general procedure of propelling uh, alternators, uh, the, this is shown here. This is the general one, this is running machine, and general two. Okay, so this is the uh, procedure. Basically, uh, uh, generator two, uh, 
or in being parallel with the running uh, process of the generator one. And these two machines are allowed to uh, synchronize uh, for supplying uh, power to a load. And generator two is about to balance with the help of a uh, switch S1. And this switch should never be uh, closed without satisfying the error conditions. Okay. This is to make the terminal voltage equal, uh, this can be done by adjusting the terminal voltage of the incoming machine by changing the field current and making it equal to the line voltage of the running system using voltmeters. And secondly, uh, there are uh, uh, two methods to check the phase sequence of the machines. So, there are as follows. First one is by using the synchroscope. It does not actually uh, check the phase sequence, but it is used to measure the difference in the phase uh, and length. And second method is a three lamp meter uh, that is uh, shown here. This is the three lamp meter. So in this uh, method, uh, we can see the three light bulbs are connected uh, to the terminals of uh, the switch. Okay. It is at the lamp connected at the terminals of the switch. And uh, so. So actually, uh, bulbs uh, become bright if the phase uh, difference is large, uh, and uh, bulbs becomes dim if the phase difference is small. And bulbs will uh, slow, so dim and uh, bright all together if phase difference is the same. Okay, the bulbs will uh, get bright in progression if phase difference is opposite, and this uh, phase difference can be measured by swapping uh, the connections on any two phases on one of the uh, generators. Okay. That is by swapping this connection. And next, uh, we have to check and verify the incoming and the running machine's uh, system frequency. It should be nearly the same, and this can be done by inspecting the frequency of the dimming and the brightening uh, of the lamps. And when the frequencies are nearly equal, the two voltages incoming alternator and running uh, systems will alter uh, the phase gradually, uh, will alter the phase gradually, and these uh, changes can be observed and the uh, switch is one can be made closed when the phase angles are equal. And synchronizing uh, this method uh, by which the alternators are operated in parallel such that uh, the above uh, specified conditions are met is called synchronizing. And to ensure that uh, the alternators are well synchronized, several methods are used. Uh, and as that is three lamp uh, dark method and two lamp uh, bright method also can be used. And also, uh, we can uh, by using a single step. And first two methods are uh, is the combination of the connections to ensure uh, that the alternative voltage has a similar magnitude and phase sequence, frequency, and zero phase sequence with the voltage. And the uh, first two, uh, uh, these first two methods actually uh, the lamps uh, illuminate, uh, illuminate with. Uh, uh, different intensities when there is a division in any uh, of the quantities mentioned above. Uh, lamps dark out and glow alternatively. In case of the uh, dark lamp method, uh, when lamps uh, go dark, the alternators are synchronized as it is indicates that the voltage is one and two are in the direct phase of position are leading to no separating current. And whereas in uh, uh, lamp bright methods, the connections are made such that uh, the lamps will glow with maximum intensity when the two voltages are in phase, and the resultant voltage is twice the voltage of both alternators. But uh, this method using uh, lamps are not quite accurate and the uh, operators expertise uh, to switch alternator in at the uh, right instant. So, hence uh, a device called uh, synchroscope is used, which, which indicates uh, deviation in uh, voltage del V and frequency del A. So that is shown in uh, this figure before a uh, single screw is connected uh, to the system and then accurate instant of the time is as if that which the synchronization is to be done. Okay. So basically mm, uh, synchroscope uh, come in uh, different variants. Uh, generally they are indicative types uh, with uh, uh, which uh, show the speed and phase shift of the alternator either by a uh, pointer or LEDs arranged in a simple fashion. Now uh, we'll uh, talk about uh, synchronizing current. Uh, once uh, a synchronized uh, machine is synchronized, it will uh, tend to remain in uh, synchronism with the other alternators. Any tendency to depart uh, from the conditions of synchronism is opposed by a uh, synchronizing torque. 
produced due to separating the coil between two alternators. And when two alternators, when two alternators are in exact synchronism, uh, the two alternators have equal induced EMFs, uh, which are exact uh, um, in page opposition. And uh, that is shown here. Uh, this E1 and E2 are in exact uh, page opposition, and no circuiting current will be uh, will flow. Uh, around the local circuit, but when the uh, induced EMFs of the two alternators are equal in magnitude, but uh, in, in not in exact uh, phase opposition, so that is shown here. So this is exact in magnitude, but there is a uh, not in the uh, same uh, phase opposition. Uh, there is a phase difference. So uh, not in uh, exact phase opposition, uh, the resultant EMF acts uh, around the uh, local circuit and cause a flow of current uh, called as synchronizing current. And this is the resultant EMF, and for that, uh, this current is flowing. Uh, this is uh, synchronizing current I S Y. And uh, as a result, if any uh, alternator, say second alternator due to some disturbances, uh, tends to retard, so this E2 uh, falls back uh, by a phase angle delta. Okay, so E2 is falls back by a phase angle delta electrical degree, and that is shown here. And uh, now, though they are induced EMFs E1 and E2 are equal in uh, magnitude, but uh, have a phase difference of 180 degree uh, minus delta. So this is the phase difference 180 degree minus delta. And uh, let uh, each of the uh, induced EMF E1 and E2 be equal to E. So then the resultant EMF will be uh, like this. Uh, this is equal to uh, 2E cos 180 degree minus delta by 2. So that can be uh, shown from this figure. So this is the resultant EMF and uh, this is equal to 2E cos uh, 90 degree minus delta by 2 that is 2E sin delta by 2. So uh, if uh, delta is very small so we can say sin delta by 2 delta by 2 and that will be E delta. So synchronizing uh, current will be here by ZS that is equal to uh, uh, this is equal to E uh, delta by ZS. So uh, ZS is a combined synchronous impedance uh, part phase of the two alternators or uh, one alternator only if it is connected to the infinite bus bus. And uh, the synchronizing current uh, I E S Y uh, lags behind the uh, resultant EMF here by an angle theta that is shown here. So, oh, this is actually theta, okay, um, by an angle theta. So, as a result, uh, uh, theta can be given as a uh, 10 inverse uh, excess by uh, R E. Where excess is the combined synchronous uh, reactance and R is the effective distance of the two alternators or, or one alternator only if it is interconnected to if it is connected to the infinite bus bar. So if the resistance R is very small as compared to the synchronous reactance excess, so synchronizing current uh, I is y e delta by excess uh, and uh, lags behind e, er by uh, 90 degree that is almost in uh, phase uh, with E1. So it, it is almost in phase with uh, E1 in that case. And uh, as a result, so uh, the uh, synchronizing current ISA is, is uh, generating uh, current uh, with respect to the machine number one and uh, motoring current with respect to the machine number two. So in generator action, uh, the current flows in the directions of the induced unit while uh, in motor action, uh, current flows in a direction of to the uh, that of the induced EMF. So this current uh, ISY sets up a, a synchronizing torque TSY, and which tends to oh, accelerate uh, the motoring machine. So that's machine number two. And, uh, decelerate the generating machine. That is machine number one. So similarly, if uh, the machine number two tends to speed up induced EMF, uh, E2 will uh, tend to advance in phase and the synchronizing current IS will, will be generating uh, current with respect to machine number two and motoring current with respect to the machine number one. And the torque uh, developed uh, due to the synchronizing current IS will uh, uh, now tend to return machine number two and uh, accelerate machine number one. And thus any uh, departure from synchronism uh, results in a development of a synchronizing torque, TSY, uh, which tends to keep the machines in um, synchronism. Okay. So now what is, uh, this is about uh, synchronizing uh, current and uh, synchronizing uh, torque. So now we are uh, talking about uh, synchronizing power. 
So in this case, uh, uh, what we have discussed so far in basic number one, the supplies part is equal to so u1 isy cos pi one, and uh, the machine number two receives power equal to e2 isy cos 180 minus uh, uh, pi two. So power supplied by machine number one equal to power supplied to machine number two. Uh, plus copper losses and the uh, uh, power uh, supplied by machine number one is called the synchronizing power and uh, is given by the expression so e1 uh, i s y cos pi 1 that is equal to e1 s y uh, if it is uh, in, in phase zero degree so it is 1 so actually uh, you can write uh, this uh, e delta uh, x s uh, actually this is cos pi one value we have put in here uh, delta by phi z z okay so um, what we are getting uh, uh, this okay so now uh, this is equal to delta e square by e axis and e1 equal to e and phi is very small e1 equal to e and phi is very small so in that case uh, we can write this equation and total synchronizing power for uh, three phases will be multiplied by 3 that is 3 delta e square by e axis so synchronizing torque if uh, t s y be the synchronizing torque in newton meter uh, then the total synchronizing torque will be t p s y equal to t s y into um, this uh, omega s uh, 2 pi n s y 60 but uh, synchronizing torque equal to c p a s y to uh, 60 by 2 pi n s uh, n s is the synchronous speed in rpm and we equal to 120 f by p now effect of uh, reactants so since uh, the uh, with respect to the local circuits the emf of an alternator is in phase opposition to the emf uh, of another alternator with which it is working in parallel. So the machine is done as a synchronous motors with respect to another. And hence, if, uh, if due to certain reasons, uh, the input to, to machine number two is cut off, uh, which is quite uh, probable. So it must be, uh, must receive what full uh, motor current from the other. So this is uh, for machine one, and this is for machine two. This is buzzword. So this is the field exercise of machine one. And this is Okay. So uh, we consider the two machines having uh, resistances uh, but negligible reactors and their EMFs E1 and E2 will be practically in phase opposition. So that is shown in uh, figure 13.3a. Okay. And there will be uh, the resultant ER uh, almost in quadrature with E1 and E2. Okay, and uh, the synchronizing uh, current, uh, I guess it gives the relation side, uh, I S Y equal to E R by R1 plus R2 will be in phase with E R, and therefore uh, will be in phase with E R, and therefore uh, uh, quadrature with E1 uh, and E2, so it will be quadrature with E1 uh, and E2. Okay, hence uh, the synchronizing current uh, ISV will be a uh, wattless current and uh, convey no part from machine number one to machine number two, which needs help. And uh, now uh, consider the two machines having the synchronous statements but no resistance. Uh, the synchronizing current ISV will be in quadrature with the resultant uh, EMF ER, so that is shown here. And uh, the machine number one will supply uh, part to machine number two and it keep machine number two running. So from the above uh, this discussions, it will appear that the, the work without reactants, the machines uh, could not develop a motor and generator parts. And respectively, uh, to restore synchronism, parallel operations will not be possible. Okay. Now, if we, what is the effect of increasing uh, the excitation of one of the alternators? Um, for simplicity, let us consider two identical alternators uh, sharing equally a uh, load uh, whose power factor is cos phi. And if both machines have exactly the same excitation, it will be found that their currents uh, U1 and I2 are equal in uh, um, magnitude, uh, say I, and uh, in phase. 
since the conditions are identical for both machines, the PDF table for the total load uh, for one uh, phase is going to be like this. Okay. So, um, and uh, if excitations of uh, one of the alternatives is increased, uh, it will uh, uh, cause a flow of synchronizing current, uh, i.e. Uh, HY. So, oh, almost in quadrature with the supply voltage V. So, therefore, uh, the load current is in uh, of alternative 1 whose excitation has been increased will be I1, uh, the phase sum of ISY and uh, I and that of the uh, alternative 2 will be I2, the phase difference of ISY and I. Okay, so uh, this is shown here. Okay, so uh, hence the power factor uh, cos phi of the alternative 1 decreases and that of the other. Uh, improves uh, because uh, synchronizing current is why is in condition with uh, B. So therefore, it doesn't uh, change what will or active components uh, but changes what is of the reactive components. And by changing the excitation, the power factors uh, of the alternators are changed. So this is important. And if the excitation of an alternator operating in parallel with other alternators is increased above its normal value of excitation, its power factor changes in the lagging direction and its current output uh, increases with uh, no appreciable change in its uh, kilowatt load. So likewise, uh, if the generator is under excited, its power factor becomes more uh, leading and uh, its current output increases with no change in uh, kilowatt output. So uh, this increase in uh, current in either case is not supplied to the load, uh, but uh, circulates uh, between the alternators connected to the system. Uh, they are increasing uh, their losses and reduces uh, their useful uh, capacity and it is uh, desirable in most cases therefore uh, to operate each alternator at the same power factor or at uh, uh, near the power factor of the load and keeping the circulating current to be uh, mainly minimum. So in general uh, the proper amount of the filter excitation for alternators operating in uh, parallel is uh, the amount of excitation each uh, alternator would need if it uh, are carrying its uh, load alone at the same voltage and frequency. Now, if we, what is the effect of increasing the driving torque of one of the alternators? Uh, when the driving torque of one of the alternators is increased, uh, that is by increasing uh, the steam supply in uh, case of uh, steam turbine uh, driven uh, alternator. So it immediately starts to accelerate and uh, the rotor of the alternator 1 whose driving torque has been increased uh, takes lead in relation to the rotor of the alternator number 2 and uh, the condition when the rotor of alternator 1 uh, has taken a lead of uh, delta degrees uh, electrical. Uh, this causes a phase difference between E1 and E2 and uh, the magnitude of uh, induced EMFs uh, remaining the same uh, resulting uh, in flow of synchronizing current uh, ESY and thus the power delivered by the alternator whose uh, driving torque has been increased will increase uh, by an amount equal to uh, E1 ISY uh, cos phi 1. Hence by uh, Increasing uh, the driving uh, torque of, of uh, the alternators, it is further uh, loaded and uh, other is uh, relieved of its uh, load. So, if the output of the alternator whose driving torque has been increased uh, becomes more than the total uh, load supplied, then uh, the other alternator will run as a synchronous motor. And the kilowatt uh, load division between alternators is uh, made by adjusting the governor controls. Uh, this the system frequency is maintained uh, constant while the load is uh, shifted from one region to the other and governor control um, switches are mounted um, on the switchboard uh, to the operator is able to so that the operator is able to watch the switchboard instruments while making adjustment of the load division. Now what is the effect of change in speed of, of uh, one of the alternators? So when the two alternators are in exact synchronism uh, the two alternators have equal potential uh, differences and uh, are in exact phase opposition and no separating current flows uh, around the local uh, circuit. But uh, um, when the speed of uh, machine 2 is uh, reduced, E2 falls back uh, by a phase angle delta electrical disease and that is shown in uh, this figure. Uh, the magnitude of the induced EMFs E1 and E2 remaining the same, uh, it will uh, cause resultant uh, EMF ER uh, acting uh, in the local circuit, which will uh, cause a flow of synchronizing current, ISY, in the uh, local circuit. 
so the synchronizing current i is why will lag behind r by theta uh, or theta equal to tan inverse uh, x s by r e since uh, r e is uh, negligible as compared to x s so therefore uh, theta is equal to 90 degree and the synchronizing uh, current i s i will be generating current and with respect to the machine one and this synchronizing current uh, sets up a synchronizing torque uh, tending uh, to retard the generating uh, machine one and accelerating uh, the motoring machine that is machine two and uh, that's the two machine uh, come again in uh, synchronism okay so that is about uh, is uh, this is due to the effect of change in speed of one alternators and how it uh, come into uh, synchronism so the frequency of the steam uh, can be raised or lowered by increasing or uh, reducing the speed of all the machines simultaneously now what is the effect of unequal voltages uh, let us consider uh, uh, two alternators having uh, their emfs uh, e1 and e2 uh, exactly in phase phase uh, in phase uh, related to external load circuit uh, but uh, of different magnitude so that is uh, u1 greater than e2 and uh, uh, the resultant emf uh, er being equal to oh, how much will be u1 minus e2 so acts in the local circuit and uh, causes synchronizing current uh, uh, around the local uh, circuit so this uh, synchronizing current uh, this synchronizing current will uh, uh, isy mm, uh, actually lags behind ER uh, by uh, 90 degree and then leads uh, E2 by uh, 90 degree so that is shown here and uh, thus uh, uh, synchronizing current uh, ISY will produce um, say uh, a demagnetizing effect on machine number one and resulting uh, uh, thereby reduction e1 e1 and magnetizing effect on machine number two and resulting thereby increase in e2 so that's the difference of e1 and e2 is uh, reduced and a stable condition is uh, uh, established so that is the effect of uh, unequal, unequal voltages and how it is being synchronized and that is also in distress and uh, now we'll uh, talk about uh, the load sharing of uh, our two alternators uh, basically, uh, if we consider two machines with identical speed load characteristics uh, uh, running in parallel with uh, common terminal voltage B volts and impedance Z, so let the generated uh, EMFs of the two machines uh, 1 and machine 2 operating in parallel B1 and E2, and uh, respectively uh, uh, E1 and E2, and uh, synchronous impedance uh, part phase. Uh, for machine 1 it is ZS1 and for machine 2 it is ZS2 respectively so therefore the terminal voltage for machine 1 should be equal to uh, E1 minus IE1 ZS1 and similarly the terminal voltage for machine 2 will be uh, E2 minus uh, I2 ZS2 so and also G equal to terminal voltage equal to IZ so what is I? I equal to I1 plus I2 and Z, Z is the system Z is So we can write uh, from equations uh, this two actually I1 equal to U1 minus BZS1 and I2 equal to U2 minus BZS2. Now this adding these uh, two equations, so this should be like this, okay, and uh, this will be equal B by Z should be equal to. So I1 plus I2 equal to I, so that is equal to V by Z uh, from these equations. Okay, so we can uh, write this actually V by Z equal to E1 minus V Z S1 plus E2 minus V Z S2. So again, uh, we can write uh, this uh, if we call take uh, um, say in this way all this uh, part. So V V into uh, this part we will take in this part minus b by z s1 and minus b by z s2 should be taken in the left hand side so it will be p into 1 plus z s1 uh, plus 1 plus z s2 1 by z s2 uh, plus 1 by z should be equal to e equal to e1 by z s1 plus e2 by z s2 or uh, b equal to in that case will be this divided by uh, this part so e1 by z s1 plus 
e2 by z is 2 divided by 1 by z is 1 plus 1 by z is 2 plus 1 by z. So this is actually uh, the voltage and this is the load sharing uh, of the load. So that's all about uh, these uh, topics uh, that is uh, uh, parallel operations of the alternators and synchronization it is different it, um, what will be the conditions of the synchronization at uh, different uh, conditions of say change in excitation, change in uh, speed uh, so it's due to equal voltage, unequal voltage, uh, then uh, uh, effect of increasing the driving of, of uh, one alternator. Of the, uh, uh, that's all a bit, uh, things we have uh, discussed and after this uh, you'll be able to uh, uh, know or you can handle uh, how parallel operations of alternators have been done and what are the effects can be uh, found from this. So these things are, uh, uh, this is the outcome and uh, I hope you will understand it and if you have any problem, you uh, say, I once again I suggest you to go to the textbook and uh, further if you can't uh, understand it, you uh, contact me so that uh, we can uh, discuss uh, for uh, the part of the problem you have. Um, okay. So thank you.